When it comes to calling and editing wedding photos quickly, this one hack will save you tons of time. Not only will keyword sorting make your editing and your calling easier, but it'll be a game changer the next time you go to update your website or post to social media. But before we jump into that, we want to introduce ourselves. I'm Hunter. And I'm Sarah. And we're Hunter and Sarah Photography, a professional husband and wife wedding photography team. We're also educators, and our goal is to help photographers build strong foundations in both their photography businesses and their personal lives so that they can run profitable and sustainable photography businesses. So today we're continuing our post-production secrets video series with a lesson about sorting in Adobe Lightroom using keywords. However, don't start sorting unless your images have already been backed up to the cloud and or an external hard drive. So if you missed last week's video, it's all about backup systems. Be sure to check that out first. So before we actually jump into keyword sorting itself, which is the second step in our post-production process after backing up our images, we actually want to make a quick note about Adobe Lightroom. So as best as we can tell, just about every professional photographer we know uses Adobe Lightroom as the workhorse of all of their photography post-production. And specifically, we're going to be referring to Lightroom Classic used on a laptop or a desktop, which is how we handle all of our editing. Hunter and I use a system that we call the primary catalog system, where we have one main Lightroom catalog where all of our final images are stored, but we also have a series of individual catalogs for each wedding that we shoot that we use when we are actually working on that wedding. So once a wedding or portrait session has been finished, all the final images from all of our sessions are accessible in a single place. And that's what we call the HSP primary catalog. That's what we've named it. But we don't have to wait for all you know, tens or hundreds of thousands of images to load up if we're just gonna pop into a wedding and work on it for a little while. We found that the system works best for us, but you could also just have a primary catalog and not worry about the individual catalogs, especially when your primary catalog is fairly small. The only thing that we definitely don't recommend is just having an individual catalog for every job without a central primary catalog. That will get unruly and unorganized very quickly. Yeah, um, so not Every photographer we know brings all of their wedding images straight into Lightroom after a wedding day. But if you're using some of Lightroom's more advanced features and you have the primary catalog and you keep it pretty organized, then you can really start to put Lightroom to work and use some of its more powerful and advanced features. Yeah, so for us, as soon as the raw files are copied onto our computer, we'll then open up our primary catalog in Adobe Lightroom Classic, and then we'll import all of the photos from our computer into Lightroom and then make sure the box for build, build standard previews is checked. So what building stand standard previews means is basically Lightroom is going to go ahead and, and build a viewable version of that raw file in advance so that when you do click on an image and pull it up full size, it's not going to need time to load up, right? If you don't do this in advance, every time you click through a photo, it's going to take Lightroom three to five seconds to, you'll see the little spinning wheel and then boom, the image will show up full quality. You don't want to have to go through thousands of photos waiting three to five seconds for every single time. Yeah, so with a decently fast computer and standard previews built ahead of time, <coughs> your sorting and calling will go super quickly. We prefer this to buying a kind of separate piece of software for calling. So the only potential downside is that building standard previews all at once for thousands of images is going to take a lot of time and computing power. So when you get back from a wedding day and you import and then tell Lightroom to build those standard previews, your computer is going to need to be plugged in powered and running for probably several hours straight. Yeah. But if you think back to our workflow from part one of this video series, you should remember that when we come back from a wedding, we put all of our photos onto our computer when we get home and then we go to sleep. So as long as we bring all of the images into Lightroom before we call it a night, when we wake up in the morning, all of our raw files will be backed up to the cloud and then all of the images will have a standard preview built in our Lightroom primary catalog. So keep in mind, this means that we can't start working on the wedding right away as soon as we upload it onto our computer. But to be honest, we've never gotten home from like a 10 or a 12 hour wedding day and wanted to do anything but make sure the photos are backed up and just go right to sleep. Yeah. So this next part is where the you know, secret part of post-production secrets really comes into play. Although we are sure that we're not the only photographers who do this, so far we just haven't met a single other professional who has a keyword sort and does it the way that we do. So here's our big secret editing hack, right? 
Before we get to calling or editing a wedding day, we spend about 15 to 30 min minutes doing a very quick keyword sort of the entire wedding day. So what this means is that we have about 15 different keywords that we use to break up a wedding day into smaller chunks. So, you know, getting ready and first look and cocktail hour are all just a couple of examples. And so while viewing the entire wedding in grid view, we'll select big chunks of the photos that are from the same part of a wedding day, and we'll use the keyword tab over here on the right of the screen to assign keywords. And you can use the metadata tab at the top of your screen to really make this process go even more quickly. So we can typically sort a 5,000 plus image wedding day in less than 30 minutes. Yeah, and since you're looking at small thumbnails of the images in grid view, you can do this before or after smart the smart the standard previews have rendered. So if you get back from a wedding early or if you're just a night owl, um, you can do this while Lightroom is building those standard previews. And by the way, for portrait sessions, we'll do this same exact process. It's just much easier and quicker since we will basically just select the entire session and apply our family session keyword or our engagement session keyword. And we do that for reasons that we're gonna explain a little bit later in this video. Yeah, so we know the first question that probably came right into your mind is, you know, why would you want to use keywords? And, you know, after all, this probably seems like a lot of extra work to invent a list of keywords and then assign all the photos in a gallery to one of those keywords. And there's really two reasons why we do this. So the first is we know that when we spend all of that time up front assigning keywords, that we're gonna get that time back a dozen times over when it comes to updating our website, posting to social media, or sourcing images for blog content, really anything that draws on old images and brings it back into the present, but we'll get to that a little bit later in the video. Yeah, it also makes the rest of the post-production process go much more quickly. And this is because the culling and editing are broken down into smaller chunks, and that just makes it feel better. So if you think about it this way, what feels more daunting? Sitting down at your computer to begin culling through 5,000 wedding images, or sitting down to cull through about you know 500 ceremony photos, knowing that when you finish, you've got around 300 golden hour photos waiting for you. We know from experience that the more daunting a task feels, the more likely you are to procrastinate and to put it off, right? So if you break a wedding day down into smaller chunks, whether you're culling or you're editing, it's just gonna make the whole thing feel much less scary and kind of gives you a little bit of a, uh, you know, a little bit of a serotonin boost, a little bit of a, a reward each time you finish one of those smaller chunks, as opposed to just having to gruel through the entire wedding all in one go. Yeah, so keywording makes it much easier when we're quickly looking for certain parts of the wedding day as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when it comes to write a blog for our couple a few days after their wedding, and you know, we know that most of our blogs are gonna heavily feature those, you know, detail and portrait, portrait, like portrait portraits, portrait photos. Um, with keywording, we can very easily narrow our field of vision to just those photos while we're preparing a blog instead of sorting through all thousand or more selected images from their entire wedding day. And we'll get to blogging in just a couple of weeks as well as part of this series. But um, so we alluded to this a few minutes ago, but the process of keyword sorting in Lightroom leads to probably one of the more unique benefits of Sarah and I's post-production workflow, which is basically if you maintain this keyword system across all of your photo shoots and all of your weddings, then like I mentioned, the power of Lightroom really starts to come into play for you. Yeah, so because we've been super consistent with sorting with our sorting workflow from the very beginning of our business, if we opened up our primary catalog in Lightroom where all of our finished images are, we could tell Lightroom to find us every single three star horizontal image of a bride getting ready from October of 2019. And in seconds, it will show us every single image that fits that criteria. So another example that might make a little bit more sense or it might be maybe a little more applicable is let's say we were getting ready to post on our social media advertising family mini sessions. What we could do is we could tell Lightroom, hey, find us every three star portrait oriented, so straight up and down, a photo of a family session in the last three years in November, October and uh, September. And boom, in seconds, all the photos that we could potentially use for advertising that specific section that specific session are gonna be pulled up on our computer. So hopefully you're starting to get a good idea of why it is worth it to us to take the extra 15 or 20 minutes on a wedding and the, you know, just a few seconds for a portrait session to keep the catalog really organized. Yeah. And if you've ever gone to update your portfolio or your website, or you realized <clears throat> you haven't posted a certain type of photo to your social media in a while, this makes your life so much easier. It's one of those things that takes a few extra minutes on each job, but it will save you just 
hours of time when it comes to sit time to sit down and do specific tasks. And at the end of the day, we believe that anything we do that's gonna make curating our portfolio or our social media easier is also gonna lead to a better portfolio and a better social media presence. And those things in the end are gonna ultimately lead to more bookings and a stronger photography business. So for us, spending that little bit of extra time is really a no brainer. Yeah. So where do you go from here? If you love the idea of a super organized Lightroom primary catalog and you're just getting started, it might be realistic for you to sit down and spend an hour or two to get your entire catalog in order for all of your previous sessions. On the other hand, if you've been shooting for years and your catalog or your collection of lots of catalogs is just crazy and jumbled and pretty unruly, don't worry about that too much. What we would recommend is start a new primary catalog today and start using the system from now on. And you know, in a year or two, by the, all of your work is, you know, because we believe that photographers get better with time, all of your best work is going to be within that primary catalog. It's going to be searchable, easily found. Yeah, so trust us, when you have hundreds and hundreds of sessions and weddings in your catalog, you'll need a good system for making searching possible. But guys, that is pretty much it for this week. So uh, thank you so much for watching. We really do hope that this video has helped you continue to think about how you'll build your own post-production workflow and figure out whether or not a keyword sort is really gonna be right for you. Yeah, if you want more helpful free content for photographers as well as a community of other people who are also building their photography businesses, we'd encourage you to join our Facebook community, Mastering the Wedding Photography Biz with Hunter and Sarah. So next week we're gonna be moving on to culling images and really how we turn thousands and thousands of raw files into a curated collection. So make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of our new content. Yeah, and if you're a newer photographer and you found this video helpful, or if you have questions, comment below. And even if you're a more experienced wedding photographer, let us know in the comments if you think we missed anything. And finally, if you want to read just a slightly more detailed dive into how this process works, we'd encourage you to check out the written version of this on the HSP blog. The links for all of these things are in the description. Thanks, guys. See you next week. See you next week.